Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another video on ECG. I am Dr. Wajesh Chibir. I have done residency in cardiology and currently I am working as a registrar cardiology. This is the ECG which we are going to discuss today. As always, this is another interesting case. But before starting the discussion on ECG, I would like you all to pause your video, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself, and at the end of the video, compare your findings and diagnosis with what was discussed in this video. So let's begin uh, the discussion on this ECG. As you all know that the first step on ECG interpretation is looking at the rhythm. For rhythm we look at lead to or rhythm strip. You, you can find a long lead at the bottom of this ECG and this lead is lead to our rhythm strip. For a rhythm to be sinus, as we have discussed in previous videos, that it, there should be an upright and prominent P wave before each QRS complex. While in this case, we cannot find a upright and a prominent Q, P wave before QRS complex. So rhythm in this case is not sinus. Next step in ECG interpretation is finding the heart rate. There are multiple methods to find heart rate, but we use a simpler method in which we look at a QRS complex which lies on broad vertical line and we count the large boxes between this QRS complex and next QRS complex as 300, 150, 100, 75 and so on. As you can see that the heart rate in this case is about 130 to 140 beats per minute. So this is a tachycardia which is obviously not originating from sinus node. Another thing which you can note in this ECG is that the QRS complex is narrow. It is around 80 millisecond. So this is a narrow complex tachycardia, which means that this tachycardia is of supraventricular origin. Now that we know that this is an supraventricular tachycardia, the next step is to find whether it is a regular tachycardia or irregular tachycardia. So again in lead 2 you can see that the RR interval is variable. The interval between different R waves is not constant. So we can say that this is a narrow complex irregular tachycardia at rate of about 140 beats per minute. There are three main differential diagnoses of an uh, irregular narrow complex supravent supraventricular tachycardia, which includes atrial fibrillation, atrial tachycardia, and atrial flutter with variable block. In the next step, we will try to differentiate between these two, these three differential diagnoses. For that, we will again look at the limb leads, that is lead 2, lead 3, and lead AVF. You can clearly note in inferior leads that the P wave is inverted. As it is underlined in lead 2, that the P wave is inverted and the atrial rate the, and the rate at which P wave is coming is about 300 per minute. Similarly, if we look at lead V1, 
we can see a P wave which is upright. So in a ECG uh, where there is a supraventricular tachycardia and which is irregular with a negative P wave in inferior leads and positive P wave in V1, our diagnosis will be atrial flutter. Now most of you will uh, question that the atrial flutter is usually regular but in this case what is happening is that there is atrial flutter with variable block now what does the variable block mean so as you can see again in lead 2 that in some of the beads there are two flutter waves followed by qrs complex while in another uh, beat there are three flutter waves with a qrs complex so this is an atrial flutter with variable block that is two into one that is two ratio one and three ratio one block there are two types of atrial atrial flutter which is typical atrial flutter and atypical atrial flutter on surface ECG, we can differentiate between these two types of atrial flutter. For a flutter to be typical, we need the P waves in lead 2, 3 and AVF that are inferior leads. The flutter waves in these leads is negative, while the P flutter waves in lead V1 are positive in typical flutter this means that the circuit the the circuit for atrial, atrial flutter in the atria will be counter clockwise as is in this case while for a uh, atrial flutter to be atypical we will find positive flutter waves in inferior leads while the flutter waves in lead v1 will be negative next we will look at the axis in this ecg as you know for axis we look at lead one and lead avf the direction of qrs complex in lead one is upwards while in case of lead avf the qrs complex is isoelectric so the net axis in this case is horizontal that is it is directed toward lead one So this is all for today. Hopefully you would have liked the ECG video. For more videos, please sub subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. Thank you and Allah Hafiz till then.